Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Georgiana again with Expressions Craft Studio and this is, gosh I hope it's week eight, that's what I'm going to call it, week eight of our uh, Project Christmas Cheer where we are making cards uh, one a day for the year which we're actually ahead of schedule on that but they are for uh, the Angel Card Project and as well as the Cards for Soldiers Project and I'll include both of those links at the bottom of the video in the description so that if you're interested, if you're a card maker and you want to see what it's about, or maybe you um, know somebody who could use, uh, who would like to be added to either program, you can reach out to those people and they can add you to the list for various reasons. So uh, today, like I said, I'm pretty sure we're on week eight um, and we are going to go ahead and put some cards together. Now I was kind of playing around with something. Uh, let me show you what I was playing around with. It was this design here and I was thinking, I know I've already done it, but I was going to go back and do snow globes again. Um, but I had some pre-printed images that I wanted to try to put in the back of the snow globe or you know to make it look like inside the snow globe and I thought these were really pretty so I made sure I could get as many on a page as possible because I hate to waste and of course I didn't allow enough room for cutting so I had to get a little creative with my uh, cutting but I think they're going to be all right so let's go back to our work surface and I'll show you what we've got here so I had some various different papers that were left over from last year's Christmas and um, still using up these base cards from Michaels. I'm determined I'm going to get those used up here in the first part of this year. Then this was is just a cut of a larger piece, an 8.5 by 11, that I ran through my inkjet printer. Now this was actually the cardstock was green and then the design is still in shades of green although it looks more blacks and grays because it was printed on the green paper but if I had pl printed it in black on my laser printer um, I would be able to foil that if I wanted to anyway this just going to be my background piece I got four out of that and then I had some of this leftover paper um, from Christmas so I cut that up and we're going to layer that on a couple of cards and then these are the snow globe images and I thought they were really, really cute. Now I got kind of lazy cutting the snow globe and I didn't want to cut out any extra pieces since I was already going to have so many layers. And I didn't realize that the base of the snow globe is actually a little bit smaller than the, the back piece. So uh, I took my ink pad. Here you go. And I just inked around it. And I'm going to show you that quick. Now the first one I did, I did it after it was already glued on. But um, the others, or this one I'm going to show yeah, all the rest of them actually, I, did, I inked before I glued it down. So let's go ahead and do that, just so you can see what I'm talking about. And I just, this is really thin. It's a thicker copier paper than normal, but it's still just copy paper, so it's pretty thin. And obviously you can use whatever paper you want. This is just like I was just testing it. So I thought I'd just use copy paper. Well, then I thought, oh, it worked well enough that I'm just going to go ahead and use that, even if it is just copy paper. Since I'll be layering it anyway, it shouldn't matter too much. So first I just do the edges, and then I want to come back and just make sure, oh, and I, oh, I did that on every one of them, bent that little base upwards, even though I tried hard not to. And, and and I just keep doing it. Anyway, um, just putting a little bit of ink there because some of these bases cracked when they went through the embosser, the embossing folder. So I want to make sure that you can't see the background too well behind there. So then I kind of just centered it on here. Let me see if I can, my, I just washed my hands. So of course I can't grab with anything. So I don't know if you can see how that doesn't quite go to the edge, but it's pretty close and that's why I just inked the edge. You can definitely see it better right there. 
Um, just to make it a little less obvious, I inked the edge. And I could probably actually scoot that back over just a little bit. Okay, so then we get our glue. And I'll just add some glue to this. Oops. And just press that down. Oh, that one didn't punch out the little holes. There are actually two little holes right up here at the top, and this, for some reason, both of them stayed in, so I'm just going to put them in there. But it did come out on most of the others. So we'll finish adding our glue here. And then just press it down. There's also a little strip, which I don't think you'll be able to see. It's just the thinnest little strip right through there that comes out. Um, but I just left it in there because uh, I didn't want that gap back behind there showing through. So now you've got your card piece. So this one is some cardstock I had from, gosh, I don't know where, but it, it was a package of, let me see here. It's Park Lane paper, and it's pastel wood grains. But I thought the green was dark enough that it wouldn't look too pastel-y for Christmas card. So I cut up a couple sheets and made some card bases because I didn't have any other dark green ones in the Michael stash um, that I thought looked Christmassy enough, and there are no red ones in there. So anyway. Uh, I also had some leftover Christmas ornament paper. I don't love it for this, but I'm trying to also keep these cards a little more simple. So, layer that on there. And then I do have these Merry Christmas uh, sentiments that I had pulled out before. I think that they're too big for this, but they are on... Iron on flocked is the red part and then green cardstock on the back and it's just the flocked parts just ironed on. But yeah, those are too big to do it that way. But maybe, maybe, maybe it will work down there. Oh, now that's not bad. What do you think? I kind of like that. That'll work. And then this one is again with the plaid paper which I really like and I cut it smaller than I normally would because I really liked this background and I wanted to be able to to see it um, so this one I just cut out the center while I was playing with the globes and I thought well I like that uh, I might put some greenery sticking out from behind it but then I've got this Merry Christmas that fits really nicely under there so these are a little bit more masculine. Mostly what I make is you know, not masculine because it's easier for me to do the florally, butterfly, bird kind of thing. Um, but I really wanted to keep some masculine. So that's what we're putting together today. And I'm going to go ahead and start gluing these together. And I will put you on pause and then I will come back and uh, show you where we're at here in a little bit. All right, so we're, I've glued some of this stuff down and others I've put uh, double stick tape on the back. And I go back and forth between the two. Sometimes I like the glue because I do get a little bit of time to slide it around. And then depending on what I'm doing, if I don't think that'll give me maybe an adequate amount of time to get it centered because that's something I struggle with, then I might use double-sided tape particularly for like background layers. And um, I just open it up on opposing corners, this side and this side, and then I kind of center it up here till I'm happy with where it is. It needs to come down a little bit. looks pretty good and so once I've got it where I think I want it I just start removing my tape and 
And most of the time, if I'm paying enough attention, this works pretty well. Let's see. Yeah, I can live with that. So then I'll take and glue on my snow globe. And I have these um, pieces from my stash that say Merry Christmas. Let's see, the last one I put at the top. So this one I think I'll put at the bottom. Okay. So we'll glue this down. I think I want it right about there. And it needs to come back this way just a little bit. Just kind of press that glue down. And go ahead and position this. I am using glue because I might want to slide it a little bit one way or the other. That looks pretty good. Oops, of course, I slid it when I was pushing it down, but I don't think I slid it too awful much. So these are just some Merry Christmas sentiments I printed out on my inkjet printer uh, with colored ink, matted them on a uh, piece of cardstock, and then I took the piece of cardstock and just kind of drug it through my um, Versa mark, and then used my embossing powder and heat embossed it just to kind of give it a what do you call that? A well, vintage or that's not the word I want, but you get the idea. And that just gives it a more of a random look instead of being so precise. fingers have dried glue on them so that's what I keep brushing off so there's that one let's see here there you go now you can see that embossing so I'm going to go and glue some more together and I'll be back all right I am back I finished gluing everything together and I'm going to go through and show you what we did now I did have two some scraps of blue that I wanted to use up so uh, that's one of them. I added a couple of vellum snowflakes that I had cut out um, previously and they were on my desk and I wanted to use them up. And the other blue one, I keep, I'm getting him too close, I apologize. Um, I added a tree over here. I know it's kind of weird because it's on the outside of the snow globe but I thought it looked cute. And I'm just using up some of my previously made Christmas sentiment tags. Now here on this one I added another tree silhouette. It's kind of hard to tell what it is, but that's what it is. And then this is my flocked Merry Christmas sentiment. And again, just using up the same bits of scraps and scrap papers that I'd previously cut. This one kind of feels like it could use a little something extra, but it's not getting anything extra. That's pretty much it. Same with this one. In fact, these next couple are all really similar. And then we have this one. Now I did put the sentiment at the top and then I realized I like much better at the bottom. Now this one's a little different. I knew it needed a little something extra, so I added a bow. I used my bow maker, which honestly, I saw somebody use one and I thought I just had to have it, but then I remembered I have hair picks that I could use. I used to use forks to make them, so this is a cute little tool, and if you don't have anything that works for you, these are available on Amazon, and I can link it below, but you really don't need it. Um, anyway, it does make a nice bow. And the reason is, I think the big difference between using like 
something you already have at home like a hair pick or a fork it's it's got this little slot here that helps you pass the bow back and forth through the front and back which does make it a little bit easier but otherwise um totally not necessary but anyway i just thought it needed a little something extra so it got a bow and this is the last one so I'm pretty happy with these. They're pretty basic cards. Again, I feel like they're kind of masculine, which is what I was going for. And out the glitter on them, they are. Um, I am able to include these to the cards for soldiers for the upcoming year in case they want to send something back to their, you know, maybe a dad or somebody. So we ended up with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight, nine, ten more cards. So we already have over 100 cards. No, that can't be right. Is that right? Is it, would it be 105? I'll have to look. I honestly, I do not know now. But we did end up with 10 more for week eight. And I know I had said for week eight that I was going to go through and put sentiments on the inside. But I forgot that I was going to do that. So we will do that for week nine. And uh, we'll do a bunch of different uh, sentiments on the inside. All right. Well, thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Any comments or feedback is greatly appreciated. I know I've been having some problems with my sound, um, and I am trying to work those out. Otherwise, uh, links should be in the description box below, and thanks for joining me.